Hi, my name is Thomas Foster and this is the first episode of a multi-part tutorial on DJ Pro AI by Algorithm. You don't need any previous knowledge for this tutorial, just give me 20 minutes of your time and I will show you how to make a perfect transition between two tracks with DJ Pro AI. Have fun! When you load up DJ Pro the first time, it should look like this. And there are many views and you can switch between the views. You can do this with this little record symbol with the yellow or orange point in the middle. Just click on it and you can switch between the different modes. So the first mode is the classic mode. This is like two really old turntables and you can turn them and do everything. I like a little bit more the two decks mode. Here you have two decks so you can make transitions between two tracks and uh, you also can use four decks. Sometimes it's useful to have a third or fourth deck. Um, you have a looper where you can add some loops or bass lines to your track. There's the auto auto mix mode where DJI creates automatically by you just choose a playlist and DJI just creates a mix between these tracks. It's amazing what it can do. Uh, sometimes it's useful just to see one deck and have more space for this deck. And here you can add some videos and play some videos. What is also pretty fun, but let's start with the two decks. And here you see deck one and deck two. And the first important thing we have to do is to load the track. And for this, you see here this blinking notes. Here you can load a track to deck A and here you can load a track to deck B. So let's start with loading a track to the first deck. You have here a lot of possibilities which kind of tracks you can load. For example, if you have a Spotify premium account, you can load tracks directly from your Spotify playlists. Uh, you also can load uh, directly from BeatSource or BeatPort, one of the best DJ platforms where you find all tracks of the DJs. Um, I'm sure you know SoundCloud. You directly can load from Tidal and for sure from your internal iTunes library. You can load movies. I go to this feature here. Here you can load from your internal data. And I have here two tracks because if I play now something from Sp Spotify, YouTube will shut down my video. So I ask a friend of mine, Christian Hornbostel. He's a very successful techno DJ. And I ask him to give me some tracks that are not released by now. So there is no problem with the YouTube video. Okay, let's load the first track simply by clicking on it. We immediately hear it. Here we can start and stop it. You see here a very big wave form where you can also scroll a little bit. What you also can do here on this knob. And you see here a very small waveform where you see the whole song. So for example, if you want to move to this break, simply click here and immediately we come to this break. All right. And you can set cue points. Let's say we want to set a cue point at the beginning of this, after the break. This is the first beat after the break. So let's use set. And now you see this little arrow here that we were setting now here at the first beat. Now I can be everywhere on this track, doesn't matter. If I click here this button, I played directly from the cue point. Doesn't matter where I am, cue point. What is very useful? Something very important when it comes to DJ tracks is the tempo. Here we see this track is 128 BPM. We simply can change this with this slider here. You can make it faster, you can make it slower. 
and to bring it back to the original position just double click it. Another possibility to change the tempo is simply to click on the tempo and now you can change it in percent, make it 15, 16% faster, also here you can double click or BPM, uh, you can go here to this pencil and type in a new tempo, I don't want that, or you can tap in a new tempo, let's try this, one, two, three, four, one, two, okay, um, let's listen to this. Still sounds good, even if it's just 102 BPM. Let's go back to the original tempo here, 128 BPM, that's fine. So the most important thing we want to do in a DJ software is to mix between two tracks. So the first thing we have to do is to load another track. So for this we click here on this node and I load the second track of Christian Hornbostel. So when it comes to DJ tracks, it's very important that both are in the same tempo. How do we do this? Let's start track number one. And now we click on track number two. Mm. Somehow it sounds okay. But you see, the longer we play it, the more the tempo is getting lost. You also see it in the graphic, where it goes like this. And you can hear it. It doesn't sound nice, right? So. In the past time, this was very difficult. When you were playing with real turntables, you really had to find the right tempo and speed up your record to make this possible. Today this is really easy because for this we have the sync function and with the sync function function it automatically takes the original tempo and doesn't matter where you click it's always on the beat. This makes it really easy. And here you can blend between the two tracks, so... Another possibility that we have is to make a loop. Sometimes you are at the end of the song and you see, oh, I just have 16 seconds left to make a mix. I'm not sure if I'm able to do this. Then you simply click the loop button because then you have a loop and here's the loop and it plays forever and then you have all the time you need to make your perfect mix. How long is the loop? At the moment it says 8. This means 8 beats. On the most um, DJ tracks we have a 4 to 4 bar. Means we have 4 quarters per bar. So eight quarters means two bars. You can hear this. One, um, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yeah. Um, let's make it one bar simply by clicking this left arrow. One, two, three, four. Now it's one bar. It's moving to the loop on the three. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's make it a half bar, means two quarters. One, two, one, two, one. One bar, uh, one beat, sorry, beat. A half beat, a qu uh, quarter, a eighth, sixteen, thirty-two. And to stop the loop, simply click on it. So very easy to use this feature and very helpful if you want to create a mix. At the moment we see on the lower part of our screen the browser. That's, that's because it's clicked here. Uh, to give away the browser simply click on this blue note here. Now you see here these three icons. To bring it back click on the notes 
uh, but you also can open here the effects or the looper. Uh, we come to the looper in another tutorial. You can add some beats or bass drums on the fly on your track. This is really fun. But we come to this in a, another tutorial. Uh, let's take a short look to the effects. We have here the level of our tracks. Sometimes it's useful not to use this slider. Sometimes you want, just want to change the level of one track. Let's try this. Very easy. We have here two filters, one for the first track, one for the second track. We can bring down with a low pass filter the high frequencies. It's easy to remember what is a low pass filter. A low pass filter in a low pass filter, the low frequencies are passing through, so we are cutting the high frequencies. And this would sound like this. And a high pass filter. Sorry, on the right side, we have the high pass filter. And we also have an EQ. See here, this little button says EQ. Now we have here the levels a little bit smaller, but still there. And now you can change the high frequencies, the mid and the low frequencies. Basically, it's doing the same like a filter, but a filter is working a little bit different and therefore it's sounding also a little bit different. Let's listen to the difference between using the low pass filter or bringing down the high frequencies here. Not doing something totally else, but sounding a little bit different, right? Okay, you can also bring up the high frequencies, what the filter can't do. You can bring down the mid frequencies. Double click to come back in the middle and the low frequencies. All right. Um, here we have some little knobs. This is the input gain. And there's a great feature on this software. It analyzing, it's analyzing every track that you import and takes care that all the tracks are on the same level. So basically don't change it. If you have the feeling a track is not loud enough, you could change this here. But normally you also play them. Here you go to full level and you don't touch this because the software is doing a perfect job to analyze, analyze the input gain. Okay, we have here a lot of other effects. So for example, here we have neural mixing. So we just can give away the drums. Or just the instruments. So you could mix the beats of this track. Let's try this. Here just the drums. And here just the bass. Now we're listening to this track with drums. And here just the bass. What well, is pretty cool. But we come to this in a later tutorial. Also here we have a lot of other effects. Yeah, in the next tutorial, we take a closer look to all the other effects. Now we take care how to make a perfect transition between two tracks. Let's go to the end of the first track and press play. We have 30 seconds left. So the first thing we're gonna do is we make a loop so we don't have stress to make a perfect transition. Okay. Now we go to the beginning of this track here. For sure we don't want to hear this scrolling, so we have to give away here the volume. Now we go perfectly to the beginning. We give away the basis of the second track and bring it with half level. And now on the next one we start. Two, three, four and start. Okay. Now we carefully bring in the volume. There we 
very cool. Now we could bring in the basses very slowly and give this a very, uh, away very slowly, so something like this. What you could do, yes. Another way of doing it is to bring it on the beat. Bring away the basses on the beat and bring in the new basses on the beat. So we create something like a little break. We make one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Means you wait until the one of the last bar. Then you give away the basses on this track. So maybe on the two or the three. One, two, three, four. And on the next one, we take care to have the basis of the new track. Let's try this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. And now we can go down with the volume very carefully of the first track. So we feature more and more the second track. And now we're done. My name is Thomas Foster and this is my YouTube channel Thomas Foster Music Production which is all about music production. In the next episode of DJ Pro AI we will take a closer look at the neural mixing and the effects. Do not miss it. If you like it please leave me a like or even better write me in the comments if this tutorial was helpful for you. Questions and suggestions are of course also welcome here and it would be great if you subscribe to my channel so you will not miss another episode of DJ Pro AI. Thanks for being there. Always stay creative. Cheers. My name is Thomas Foster and if you like producing music then you probably need regular audio loops. So good sounding drum loops, percussion, guitar, vocal and many other samples. And there is a new exciting web page I'm involved in developing, Mutant.com. Mutant is a search engine for audio loops and samples. The stuff sounds really great and is well produced and mastered. The incredible thing is that all thought Mutant actually sees itself as a web shop. At the moment almost all sounds are free. You do not have to enter an email address. Just go to mutant.com, search for the desired audio file and click download. And it's really fun to work with. At that point I say thank you for being there, always stay creative, cheers! Mm -hmm.